browsers need to get faster. And this is because content on the web has changed a lot since the early days. In the early days of the web, speed really didn't matter that much. We were just looking at static documents. So as soon as the document was rendered to the screen, the browser was pretty much done. But then people started pushing the boundaries. Pages started getting interactive and having animations. For example, do you remember when everyone went wild with drop-down menus and created these fancy slide-down menus with jQuery? Once that was part of the page, the web page wasn't just being painted once in the browser. With every change, it needed to be repainted. If you wanted interactions or animations to look smooth, these repaints needed to be happening at a certain rate. The screen needed to be repainted 60 times per second. So that meant that you only had 16 milliseconds to get all of the work done. Browsers made all sorts of changes to come up to speed and to accommodate these new applications and get up to 60 frames per second. But as is the way with the web, content authors started pushing the boundaries even more. Porting PC games and talking about bringing things like Photoshop to the web. And it's not just the content authors that are pushing these boundaries either. It's also hardware vendors. For example, the new iPad is going from 60 frames per second to 120 frames per second. And new kinds of content are coming to the web and pushing the web even further. For example, with virtual reality, you have one display for each eye, which is probably displaying at 4K resolution. And these displays have to be updated at 90 frames per second to avoid motion sickness. So let's think about what that change means. If we're running a website on a 13-inch MacBook Pro, we have 16 milliseconds to fill in about 4 million pixels. With the next iPad, you have half as much time, 8 milliseconds, to fill in 3 million pixels. And with a VR experience, you have 11 milliseconds to fill in 16.5 million pixels. And this doesn't even include any of the heavier JavaScript needs that an application like that might have. So this is a huge leap that browsers need to make in order to keep up. What happens if browsers don't keep up? Well, as more and more people buy these devices, and as more and more content moves into these heavy applications, if browsers don't keep up, people will stop seeing the web as the default place to put their content. And that is a pretty scary thought. But to be honest, I'm not too worried. I'm confident that browsers can make this leap. The reason I'm confident is that at Mozilla, we've been prepping for this for the past 10 years. We've been looking at the direction that computer hardware is going, and we've been figuring out the way that we need to program to keep up with these changes. The answer is parallelism. The future of the browser is parallel. We've only just started taking advantage of this in Firefox, but we're already seeing big wins from it. And every indication is that this new way of doing things can get us where we need to go.